One thing we like to show as well is just a map, a visualization of what this sort of access actually means, right? Where we're looking at here, the used and unused access over the past 90 days of this particular service principle. Welcome to Powered by Snowflake, where I interview technology leaders building businesses and applications on Snowflake. I'm your host, Daniel Myers, and today I'm talking with John Morton, field CTO of Brightiv. The Brightiv platform provides a unified access model and policy enforcement across cloud and SaaS platforms, and it's powered by Snowflake. John, how are you today? I'm good, Daniel, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for joining me here today. In your own words, describe to me what the Bright of solution is. Okay. Bright of is an identity company, first and foremost, that focuses on cloud access management. What do we mean by cloud access management? We basically break apart authentication and authorization, and we really double down on the authorization piece of giving humans and non-humans alike just-in-time temporary access to the permissions that actually make most of them privileged. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, tell me about how and when did the Bright of company, when was it founded and, and where is it today? Yeah, Bright of was founded in 2018. Our headquarters are out of Glendale, California. The future is bright with Bright of. Our trajectory is really large. We've really doubled our employee count this past year. We've tripled our revenue for the first quarter of this year. We have customers ranging from the Fortune 10 to Series A startups. One thing we're really proud of is zero churn. Another thing I like to highlight is that our sweet spot for customers is those cloud-native, cloud-focused folks who are multi-cloud and SaaS. That is an impressive trajectory and some really awesome stats. So I want to see then today a demo of this solution that you've built. Can we see that? Absolutely. Why we love Snowflake is that identity data historically has always been too expensive to send to a SIM. Essentially, security teams were throwing away vital data that could help in reconstructing events or helping them identify problems. Right of use of Snowflake is in creating an identity-centric data lake, as shown here, where we're taking different cloud sources, standardizing and unifying that access and view, putting it into um, Snowflake, where we then analyze it for access control. What we do with it is pretty cool. We actually analyze effective permissions across those cloud resources, again, about identities and who's accessing what. That's not limited to just humans. That also includes non-humans, things like service principles, Lambda functions in AWS, for example. Whereas we're showing here, we have a test role attached EKS being used by a service principle where we're showing risk. Is it high risk? Is it not? And that's based on scope of its reach as well as the access it has. That's what we're showing here presented to us from Snowflake back to Brightiv is when this service principle was created, it was given a default policy from AWS that has a lot of permissions. And over the past 90 days, analytically, we've analyzed it and we show it only does one thing, EC2 describe network interfaces. One thing we like to show as well is just a map, a visualization of what this sort of access actually means, right? Where we're looking at here, the used and unused access over the past 90 days of this particular service principle. One other thing we like to do with Brightiv is we standardize how the query engine works in allowing, you know, not so SQL heavy DBAs to analyze the data we have in our identity centric data lake using our query engine. So in this case, we're looking for things like within KMS across this particular AWS account, including how entities, humans and non-humans, are getting access to specific resources, including their access path and all the details that may be pertinent to, again, reconstructing some sort of security event. But at Brightiv, we really like to focus on enforcement. As I'm showing you on my screen, when we talk about things like Jupyter Notebook, what we're trying to do essentially is separate authentication from authorization. We know that most connectors, when it comes to cloud applications, they require hard coding credentials something like this, where we're saying, you know, as data scientists tend to use our tool, they're hard coding these credentials and they're using them to connect. And what they end up doing is they do things like sharing these templates. That's where something like Brightiv's vault comes into play. You can store these sort of credentials into a vault for accessing data in Snowflake, for example, using a snow connector. 
but we separate the two out. What we do is we say in one aspect, you can store secrets in our vault that you can fetch non-interactive. But the key here is again, that enforcement of profile privilege escalation, where we're saying, cool, you have fetched the secrets, you have those, but also you're going to check out your permissions. Meaning if someone stole those credentials or your connector, no problem. They don't exactly have the role they need to execute what they're trying to do. So when you combine the two ideas together, like we do at Brightive, and you run this same query where you're saying fetch the secrets from the vault, as well as elevate my permissions and give me the role within Snowflake that I need, including something like a database or a warehouse, now I get the return I need from Jupyter Notebook. The key here being with that enforcement, right? We know who did what, when, where, and why, and they have elevated permissions or access to that particular role for only 59 minutes. We're after 59 minutes, we are going to return that role to public for that specific user. Again, getting to that least privileged sort of model. That's awesome. This seems like a really powerful platform and one that really benefits from the, the power that Snowflake provides. Absolutely. So that's part of the reason why we like Snowflake to be more explicit is when you look at the amount of data we have, there's two real methods that customers want. Either one, Brightive can manage the data, like using Snowflake's managed apps where we ingest that data with the diagram I shared. The other is connected apps. Bring your own Snowflake where a customer is, has their own Snowflake subscription and we can just leverage and reference that, all while providing them this just-in-time capability of ephemeral access to the humans and non-humans in Snowflake itself, so. I'm really glad that you brought up, you know, the, some of the differences between managed and connected apps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you say a connected app, what underlying technology are you leveraging when, when building out this connected application? Yeah, so again, it just comes back to building these identity-centric data lakes within Snowflake. Once we have the identity-centric data lake, it's just a matter of where does it live, within the customer's environment or within Brightive's environment, back to the diagram, it's just a matter of what data do we want. The key here, identity-centric data. That's awesome. So when really leveraging Snowflake, right, there's some key, key features. So traditionally, I've seen a lot of different customers use, mm -hmm. right? And so when, when developing a connected app, for example, the concept of data sharing, can you talk to me more about how you use data sharing to really reduce the operational burden that you may have, otherwise, you know, having to leverage a REST API instead of direct data sharing. Yeah, exactly. So that's an interesting point, and we can go really deep on that, Daniel. So I'll kind of skim the top. You get into things like Colo, which clouds they're actually hosted mm -hmm. in, how are these things hosted. The burden shouldn't have to be on the customer in all reality. It should be, you know, us as the vendors and the consumers of the data to figure that out. So having that sort of flexibility is one of the powerful things about Snowflake itself, right? So being able to pivot on where we want that data to reside and how we actually get it in our tool, even if it is an import like with SQS and you know AWS or SNS, it's just about leveraging what we can with Snowflake. That's awesome. So when, when you were originally developing this application, this platform, mm -hmm. how, how did you end up, what considerations did you have when you chose Snowflake to be the underlying data cloud that you built on top of. Yeah, so speed, scalability, and compute. Any organization or enterprise that goes through acquiring a product, that should be the questions they ask, right? Especially when you're a startup trying to make the right decision and forward thinking. POC was head-to-head -head with a few other folks, including Snowflake, and it was hands down just an easy choice. What's next for your customers at Brightif, right? So six months, one year down the line, um, what should people be getting excited about to see what's next? Yeah, so a uh, couple things is expanding the footprint of that visibility within Snowflake, getting sort of that concept of role right-sizing recommendations about identity, but the enforcement is key, right? Being able to enforce the permissions you want, like with Snowflake roles, warehouses, compute, schemas, and expanding that out to SaaS solutions, Salesforce, ServiceNow, outside of what you would traditionally think of in the cloud is really exciting for folks. We see this huge expansion in growth in the cloud, so yeah. That's exciting. So, you know, I want to say thank you for joining me here today. You know, for people that want to learn more about you and Brightive, where should they go? Yeah, you can always, uh, you know, reach out to us. We have our website, brightive.com is available. Um, our sales team is always available. We have a large LinkedIn and social media presence. And, you know, we're in the Powered by Snowflake program. So reach out to Snowflake sellers. That's awesome. 
Thanks again for joining me here today. And for all of our viewers out there that want to learn how to build your next application on Snowflake, check out developers.snowflake.com. Thanks.